It was not that long ago the Tea Party was considered to be a changing force in American politics. Beginning with the inauguration of Barack Obama in 2009 and riled into existence by those who claimed a new party was not only necessary, but imperative to keep America safe and sound. The Tea Party hasn't gone anywhere, but they do seem to be much quieter of late. So let's dig into where they've been, their response to the Obama final State of the Union, and who carries that conservative flag for them in the Thursday night debate. Let's welcome back the former Libertarian vice presidential nominee, best-selling author of several conservative books, including The Power of Relentless, syndicated columnist Wayne Allen Root. Wayne, always a pleasure to catch up with you again. Thanks for joining us. Let's get right to the State of the Union. In the Tea Party's opinion, and you are the leader of that Tea Party, where did he miss and where did he miss badly? Well, there's a famous saying, what's the difference between a lawyer and a liar? And the answer is spelling. <laughs> And so last night you saw a lying lawyer on display. I mean, lawyers can never admit they're wrong, Ed. They can never go on national TV and say, my client is guilty and they know he's guilty. They can't say that. So they try and tell you he's an angel and he's innocent. Well, Barack Obama was representing himself last night as a lawyer, and he can't say the president's a fool and the economy's horrible and there are no jobs except part-time jobs for illegal aliens. So he tried to lie to everyone and tell us the economy is great, and if you don't agree, you're an idiot or you're smoking crack. That's basically what he wanted to say. He was a little more subtle than that, but that's pretty much what he was thinking and what he was saying. And he's I don't dead know, but wrong. Be, the economy is a nightmare. I don't know, Wayne, but there'll be people in Washington who will say, quite frankly, inside the beltway, who will say you, you weren't descriptive enough, but we'll leave them for the, the time being here, if you will. Uh, is it fair to say, though, that when it comes down to immigration, that is one of the keys that the Tea Party has always been talking about here. He went very light on immigration, basically because he knows that he's got too many places there where he can be attacked. Yeah, I mean, he went heavy on one thing last night, in, in my opinion, watching the debate, was climate change, climate change, and more climate change. And once again, the lying lawyer came into play. Very little about uh, immigration, because the borders are wide open, and terrorists are walking across, and thousands of illegals are walking across. And I have friends who are Border Patrol agents who tell me things in confidence that they're not even allowed to tell me, and they pray that I won't get them fired and mention their name, but they tell me that every day they're capturing people from Middle Eastern countries who are military-age males that are going to attack this country. They feel it, they know it, and they're not allowed to ever announce it or discuss it. So we've got a real problem in that border. And of course, Obama would discuss that thousands every week of people who have no intention of being terrorists are walking over that border who want cradle-to-grave welfare, Ed, for the rest of their lives, and they will bankrupt this country, not to mention police costs, court costs, and prison costs. So the border, in my opinion, is the number one issue in the United States of America. Or actually, let me amend my answer. The debt, the national debt is the number one national security threat. The border is the number two national security threat. And terrorism is the number three. And we have a president who's on the wrong side of all of those. He's a terror denier. He can't even admit that you use the word Islamic and terrorist in the okay, same I'm going to stop you there for a second because you're hitting a lot of these points, but I got two minutes left, and there's two things that I want to hit on before we leave. On the Hill, the website, they talk about the fact that five years after the successes of the Tea Party in 2010, conservatives recognize they have done little to dismantle this two-term president's legacy, and they are expressing some misgivings about their record. How do you respond to that, and do you want to admit that some mistakes were made that you've got to correct the next time around? Well, I don't admit that any mistakes were made by the Tea Party. We've been on the right side of every issue, and we would have absolutely But perhaps you thought you were going to do too much. I think that's what they're saying. They believe that perhaps the Tea Party came in and said, we can do all of this, but now they have been hit with reality that maybe we asked and tried to do too much the first time out. Uh, but the real issue, Ed, is that Tea Party people are not a majority of Washington. Democrats and establishment Republicans together are a huge majority, and you can't make things happen if you're in the minority, especially a small one. And Tea Partiers would have absolutely changed the landscape in D.C. I would absolutely change the landscape in D.C., but you got to be the majority party to do it. The real blame doesn't lie with Democrats. It lies with an out-of-control president who uses executive actions to overcome any objections Congress has and violates uh, any division or separation of powers. He doesn't care what the uh, Congress does, the House does, the Senate does. It doesn't matter to him. And the other real culprit is the establishment GOP. They don't want progress. 
They like things the way they are because they're not on the side of the people. Okay. They're on the side of the biggest corporations. I've got 30 seconds left. Let's talk about that establishment quickly then. The GOP debate comes up tomorrow night. Out of those who are still standing, who carries the Tea Party banner? Oh, I think uh, Donald Trump by far is the Tea Party type of candidate, and Ted Cruz would be the second one. Those would be my one-two punch, and Donald is my favorite. I, I think Donald Trump does something that's separate from conservative credentials. He's the guy that's going to go to Washington and upend it and turn it upside down and fire people and, more importantly, hopefully, uh, investigate and prosecute and put people in jail who have ripped off the American people. I count on Donald to do something like that. I don't think anyone else has the cojones to pull that off. The Tea Party still has its energy. Wayne Allen Root is the guy who's right there to tell you that indeed they do. Wayne, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk again soon. Now, is there any possible way to repair the rift of suspicion between political parties in Washington? We'll focus on that next on The Political Animal here on The Hardline.